Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to go ahead and give uh, some stragglers a couple more minutes here to join our session, and then we'll get the webinar started. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate it. And this is going to be one of our free training Thursdays. And today the topic is going to be document management. So we're going to go over Office Tools DMS from uh, some setup features to usage. And I'm actually going to throw in a couple things that uh, even more experienced users may not be aware of when it comes to documents and how we can uh, uh, manage those within Office Tools. So some of the big areas that we're going to hit um, are going to be, you know, again, under the hood stuff, we're going to do some interface things, and um, I'm going to open up at the end of the webinar for some Q&A, if anybody has any questions about Office Tools in general, or about uh, what we've talked about today. Uh, my name is Philip Ferris, I'm the Director of Education for Abacus Next, and a uh, so the Solutions Architect for Office Tools. So I know a little bit about the program, uh, so hopefully we can, uh, we can uncover some things, again, that maybe we're not aware of as we go through this. So what I'm going to focus on today is picking the right location for your documents to be stored. Now, I'm gonna assume anybody who's listening to this is currently using Office Tools DMS, but I am gonna revisit some of these things, and this is gonna be one of those. Um, talk a little bit about the Office Tools folder structure, including categories. Then we're gonna go into some of the functionalities that we'll, uh, we'll be using to get documents into Office Tools, such as drag and drop, uh, PDF print drivers, and, and the drop folder or the scan folder. And then obviously I'm gonna talk a little bit about the the interface itself and kind of how to navigate it. Um, it. Not that it's difficult to do, but there's some things that, again, even more experienced Office Tools users may not necessarily be uh, be aware of. Okay, so let's start right at, at, at with the with the first step there, which is picking a DMS location. Now, again, I'm going to assume everybody's already using Office Tools, but uh, just as a best practice, let's revisit this real quick. When you're setting up Office Tools to handle your documents, all it's really doing is referencing a folder or a location on your network. So some important things that you have to consider when doing this is one, you wanna make sure that wherever you're putting these documents, there's enough actual storage on that system. Typically I'd obviously recommend the, your server. Um, you wanna make sure that it's a mapped drive. So whatever drive or whatever location you put this folder, you wanna make sure that the other computers in your network have access to the same mapped drive. Now, in some cases, some offices through the years, they add new computers, maybe they change ITs. We can all see the same folders, but they're actually mapped differently. It might be the K drive on my computer, um, but it's the L drive on yours. Uh, if that's the case, we need to make sure that we have the same drive on, on all the computers. Otherwise, there's going to be some miscommunication between the, the workstations and the server when it comes to locating and placing documents. So make sure your mapping is correct. Make sure your networking is correct. Um, and you'll be you'll be good to go. Now, one thing that I would recommend, and I'll show you where that option is here real quick. So you're gonna want to go to setup here at the top, my company, information and settings, and right down here there's an area for documents. And this is where you can choose that location. One thing I would recommend too is when you're using Office Tools DMS, is to not use both locations at the same time. What I mean is once we start going with Office Tools, we have to kind of stick with Office Tools. It's not really a good idea to also go and fiddle around with the Windows folder structure. And there's reasons for that. Uh, the, the, the easiest one is just that Office Tools is referencing it and building the folders and placing documents in locations based on your, uh, your choices of categories and things of that sort. So if we go to the back end, if we go to the folder itself, the Windows folder, and we begin moving things around in there, we then have to come back into Office Tools and actually re-index or re-scan all of those folders. Um, very often we forget to do that or it's a time-consuming process and we just shouldn't have to go down that road. So leave any of the back-end folder kind of stuff for, um, for things that are really critical, like you're moving servers, things of that sort. But for the everyday common kind of document needs, just do everything in Office Tools and you'll be much better off uh, for doing it that way. 
So once you have all that set up, uh, what's important to realize again is that Office is going to manage all that for you. So if I actually go to the Documents tab, which is where I am here, I can hover over one of these documents and it'll actually show me the path. K slash OT document slash client name, so on and so forth. And that's again where the where the file is stored. So when you add a new document into Office Tools, it's going to go ahead and create everything it needs. It's going to create the client name, the folder for the client name. It's going to create the categories, the years, the project folders, whatever is decided by you when you import that document. Office Tools will create the appropriate folders and, and organize it in that folder structure. But you don't need to have all of them. So what I mean by that is you can add a document, like I, I pulled up the details of one that I already have here, and you can choose a specific year, all right, um, and a project or not. Maybe you don't want a year. Maybe this is a, a more of a permanent kind of file. There's no year association necessarily. So you can omit certain things or, or add all of them if you like. And those folders, again, are being managed by Office Tools in the back end. There's not much you need to do here. Visually in Office Tools, while you do see all of the files laid out, all we've done is, is removed the visual part of the folder trees. But those are still referenced in these drop downs and, and search options. And we'll go through those when we get to the end here a little bit, talk about the interface a little bit more. So two of these fields, we have three total, a year, project, and category. Um, two of them, there's not much we can really do from a customization point of view. Uh, years are years, right? <laughs> there's not much we can change about that. Projects, while the projects themselves are obviously customizable, when it comes to placing those documents with a project for a client, obviously that client must have that project. So there's not much we can do there other than just associate the actual file to an actual project that the client may have. The third option, however, categories, we can customize, and we got some choices there. So the easiest way to add or, or modify those categories, okay, we can see those over here on the right. We have all our category options in here. It's just to navigate up to the setup window up at the top, and then just go down to the document section under categories. There's a list here. You can add to this, this list. You can remove from this list, but you cannot add a documents to categories on the fly, meaning you have to come into the category section first, create the item on this list, and then it will be available in the future when you're adding new documents. All right, and we do this, there's a reason we, we do this. I know it may seem like a couple extra steps, but the reality is this document management can become a mess very quickly. Um, everybody starts to put their own version of a file name or a folder name on things, right? We get the, we get the, the tax return folder, but we also get the 1040 folder, and then we also get the individual tax return folder, and it's all the same thing. It just kind of depends on who created the folder, right? Uh, we want to eliminate that. So what we've created here with the categories is the, the company or the, the firm version of all available options when it comes to categories. It keeps everything nice, consistent, clean, and efficient. So in the future, when time comes to filter or to search for certain documents, you know if you choose to look for tax return documentation, you're going to get it all. Okay, there's no versions of tax returns. It's, it's all under one specific category. So we have these options, right? We have, you know, years and projects and categories, and we have this list of documents. So let's talk a little bit about getting files in here. Now, I'm going to start with the easiest, most common, and, and, and kind of most practical version of getting documents in. And that is to simply drag them <laughs> from whatever location they're currently at into Office Tools directly. So as an example, I have a document right here on my desktop. So let me just move these things out of the way real quick here. So I have a little file here on my desktop. And I just click on it, drag it over, release, and I now get my create new document form. Now from here, I can go ahead and choose my years, I can choose my projects, categories, and so on. Once I'm done, I say OK, and it will move that file from the desktop and place that in document management. Very, very simple. That is, again, probably the most common method of putting a document into, into Office Tools. That functionality also works on individual tasks, especially projects. So what you're also able to do is actually go into, for example, a call um, or a to-do, whatever it may be, and when you create this task, there's actually a drag and drop box located on the screen, typically over in the right corners, where you can drag a document to that specific item, and it will also add it over to document management. Especially important when it comes to projects. So you can go directly to a project, 
add a document to your project. It'll put the year on it automatically. It'll put the project name on it automatically. And you can simply just add a category to the end if you like. So the drag and drop directly into document management is an option, but you can also drag and drop to specific events like calls, to-dos, projects, and appointments. Now, a little less common of a way, but something that I find myself actually using more often than I would think, is the ability to just right-click on the document. So if you right-click on a file, whether it's on your desktop or in a folder, wherever it may be, you can send to. So if you just right-click and then choose the send to option, you'll see Office Tools Workspace located right down here. This can be helpful if you have a lot of programs open. There's a lot of things going on, on the screen. You're you're in a Windows folder real quick, and you know dragging and dropping just is not going to work well for you in that situation. Just right click on it, choose Office Tools. It'll give you your screen, and you can move on. Okay. Another option is to install PDF drivers and our Microsoft Office add-in or Adobe add-in drivers. So here's how you do that. Go back into document management here under the documents tab. There's actually a button here labeled install. So even if you're uh, using Office Tools document management, this is probably something that you may not be aware of. Um, it's a little obscure. It's, it's again, if you're not using Adobe or you're not necessarily using the Microsoft stuff, then there's not much reason to come in here except for the PDF print driver, but they're all located under this install button. And from here, simply choose the option you'd like to install, run the utility, and what that'll do is that will place in Adobe and in the Microsoft Office products like Word, Excel, and Outlook, um, an Office Tools document import add-on. So if you are in an Excel file or you are in an email or a Word document or you're working on a PDF, whatever it may be, you can actually just click the Office Tools button within those programs and it will prompt you to import into Office Tools. So you can save it and then bring it right into Office Tools from within that program. You don't have to drag or drop anything. It saves it in whatever the format is. Again, if it's a PDF, it'll save as a PDF. If it's an Excel file, it'll save as an Excel file. Very, very handy. Um, if you're not using those products, obviously you don't need them, but the PDF print driver, however, I would recommend for really everybody. Um, and what this is, is just that. It will install a, a print driver on the computer that you install that you run it on. And any document from any program that you would like to have in Office Tools, I'm assuming that program has a print capability, you can choose to print the file and simply select Office Tools PDF as the printer, and it will go through the process of actually creating a PDF based on your document and bring that right in. And you can see that. It's actually very easy to see. Let me just, I'm just going to go to this file right here, this, this blank text document I have, and I'm going to go ahead and print it. Now I'm going to get my list of printers, all right, and one of these you can see here is Office Tools PDF. So if I choose to print to that, I'll have my copy, my PDF copy, also located within, within Office Tools. Very, very handy. So the last option when it comes to bringing documents into Office Tools is through our Drop folder or Scan folder. If you're using scanners, this is very, very handy. Um, this will allow you to point your scanners to a specific location on your, on your computer. And in doing so, whenever you scan files and they're deposited into that, um, into that scanned folder, Office Tools will recognize that and actually bring those into Office Tools. And it'll give you all the prompts. You'll be able to choose, again, categories and years and, and all those details. Now, the setup's a little different, so I'm going to walk everybody through that right now. The first thing that you want to do is actually create the folder on your desktop. I would recommend your desktop, but it can be on your, you know, your local machine. It can be on your network, um, but you need to have a location that you're either scanning to or that you just want to use as a drop. I mean, you can just drag from your desktop and place it in here if you like. Um, if you have your scanner pointing here also, again, that's where the real, uh, the real value is going to come from. And we're going to emulate that here right now. So I have my folder. All right. So once you have your folder, you're going to go back into Office Tools. You're going to navigate up to the setup option at the top, documents, and there's an area here specifically called drop folder. Okay, now once you do that, the system is going to prompt you to choose a path. So you need to find that folder and you can use the little navigation ellipsis button here to do that. Now once Office Tools is pointing at that folder, it's going to monitor, it's going to have a look in there and anytime a new document appears, it's going to ask you to import that file. And again, you can use your scanners or you can simply drop files in there. So um, obviously I don't have a, a scanner hooked up to this uh, computer. So all I'm gonna do is take my test document right here 
I'm going to drag it in there, which would be the same thing as scanning it in. Drag it in there, and then Office Tools is going to prompt me to import the document. So I can go ahead and choose my year. All right, choose a category or project. Uh, let's just call it uh, yeah, invoice. Sure. Say OK. And I'm done. The scan folder is now empty. It has moved the document. And if we peek back into Office Tools, we can see our file is right here. Again, these are all ways of bringing in documents and Office Tools. And I will have people ask me um, quite often, what's the best way? What's the best way to get documents into Office Tools? That's very situational. It really depends. I think the best practice is to use all of these tools and get comfortable enough with them to where no matter what the situation is, you have the quickest possible way of getting a document in. Um, if somebody sends you an email, you drag the email in. If you're working on an Excel file, you hit the add in button. If it's something that um, is already on your, your firm's drive or on your network, you drag and drop it in there. Um, again, it just kind of varies, but you will find yourself probably doing the drag and drop more than anything else. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about, and by the way, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type those in even during the, uh, the webinar here. Um, I'll try to address them as I'm going through, but if not, obviously I'll leave some time at the end for any questions. So let's talk a little bit about the interface, the, the document management interface. It, it is pretty straightforward and pretty basic, but there's some, again, there's some things here that may not be um, clear to even experienced users. So when you come into the, the documents tab, obviously we're looking at all the files specific to this contact right um whether it's an individual or a business whomever maybe it's it's just for this contact now the most common navigation that people will do is to just use the filters located over here on the right a uh, year project and category now, i don't have any projects associated to these uh, but i do have the years and the category so i could very easily say well you know i want to see any emails that were sent uh, you know a couple years ago so when you hit these drop down menus here at the top It'll show you a list of only the available options. So for example, when I hit the year drop down, all right, notice that there's no 2017. It goes from 16 to 18, meaning I don't have any documents in the 2017 folder, um, or I don't have anything prior to 2009. So it's only gonna show me the options that I actually have available, so I'm not having to, to fish around. So I can go ahead and choose this particular year, and it's now gonna filter all my documents for that year. Obviously, if I have projects, I can use that. And then I can also come over to category and just simply throw the category on there. So there's all of the files related to the 2015 tax return. And if the client wants a copy, boom, there we go. It's that quick. So those are some options, again, to just get real quick. And those are the most, those are the most common. Uh, I think the, the filters there really kind of become the, the, the go-to. Um, let me move this out of the way real quick. So the question, actually I actually got a question here, uh, is that can you set up the document folder to a Dropbox folder? Um, you can, however, there are some complications there just because Office Tools, uh, when it comes to re-indexing and adding new documents, need certain levels of permissions. Um, that's something that uh, our training department or our technical, technical team would be more than happy to, to talk with you about and figure out. It varies enough to where I can't give you a solid yes answer, um, but we do have offices and some clients who um, do do use that, do have that functionality connected. So uh, reach out to us in the training department. Uh, you can just email training at officeschools.com and we'll be more than happy to talk to you about how your system is set up and those things and we can figure out the best way of doing it. Very good, very good question. So the filters are a great go-to. Um, something that I think is overlooked and not used maybe enough is the actual search capability. Now this is not going to search through the contents of the document, just the file name, but it's nonetheless very, very helpful. If I wanted to find a certain file, I could just come to the search bar and begin typing things in. All right, it's, it's really, it's that simple. Um, I used to just use the drop downs, and that was in most cases enough, but I, I've recently kind of got a little bit more um, uh, handy with the filters. I know what I'm, or with the searches. I know what I'm looking for. It makes it a little quicker for me to just come in and just type in, you know, the word email. Boom, there we go. There's all the emails. Okay, so, or all the files with the word email in it. Um, in this subject. So there's one more filter that almost nobody that I've run into actually is aware of. Uh, it's, it's one of those little hidden gems. Um, and that's being able to filter out by file type. So over on the left side of the screen here, okay, we can actually see the icons that represents the different types of files, right? We have, we have PDFs, we have PowerPoint, we have Excel, 
Uh, we have emails, so on and so forth. If you click on any one of these, don't click on the name of the file, but click on the actual icon, it will then limit that to only that file type. So I click on PDF, I can only now see PDFs. If I click on the email type, I can see all of the emails and so on and so forth. Very cool, very handy. If you know you're looking for a, you know, we, we all have that, right? We're looking for a file. We don't know what it's called necessarily, or we, we're not sure. Um, we don't know where it might be in a category. We just, we know it's an email as an example. This makes it very handy to filter that down, only look at the emails. And now I only have to scroll through, you know, maybe a, a dozen or two dozen files very quickly and, and find what we're looking for. So that's very, very handy. Um, I really like that option. There's also a search button here at the top, which gives you a lot of the same, a lot of the same options, just kind of in one screen. And the last thing about the interface that I want to point out um, before we dig, dig just a little bit deeper is that you can actually assign documents to other people for review purposes. And I, this caught my eye, and I want to mention it real quick. It wasn't part of my original plan, but I think it's important nonetheless. You can choose a particular document, like a, um, you know, an Excel file or an invoice that you need to have reviewed or whatever it may be. Okay, you can select a document and actually hit the review button here at the top. And just like to do's, you can then assign this to somebody. You can put a note in here. You can even put budgets and reminders. And then when you say OK, it'll actually show up on their list, on their activity list here on the bottom as a file. Let me go to Brandon's list here. We'll pull it up here right here from admin, where when they click on it, it will actually take them to that specific document, which they can then review. When they complete their task, they can put notes about what they, you know, uh, changes they like to make or what they think about it and send it back to whoever originally uh, created the review in the first place. And all of this is recorded under this button for the future. So you can always open it up and see who looked at it, who said what, what did they, what was the replies, the responses to it, and so on. So the document review, again, is a little less known, but I think it's a very uh, powerful tool. So if you have a lot of documents that are flying back and forth between people, this might be a good tool to set up reminders and track those details a little bit better. Okay, so now as far as the interface goes, there's only a couple more things, and that has to do with the files themselves. So when you have the, the, uh, the list here in front of you, some options that you're able to do, you have on the toolbar, you know, edit, delete, copy, so on and so forth. But you can also right click on the file itself. And when you do that, you'll get a whole menu of options. And we don't have time to go through every single one of these, but a couple ones that I wanna point out that are really important um, are the details. The details are the main screen that you see when you drag a document in for the first time or when you import a document for the first time. So if you've made a mistake or you want to move a file, simply right click on it, okay, go to details, or you can go to the edit button here at the top, it's the same thing. Open this up, and now I can say, well, I didn't mean to put this in 2018 invoices. This actually should have uh, gone to uh, 2018 payroll reports, and it will update the categories or the projects or the years um, as needed. Okay, some other options in here that are very handy are open file location. This will actually take you to the Windows folder structure where that file is located. But again, do that with the caveat that I mentioned earlier that if you start fiddling around back in there, you'll have to come into Office Tools and re-index. I also like the ability to actually view the document history. Okay, this is the audit trail. Who added it? Who had access to it? Who modified it? Very, very handy. Okay, if you're using the client portal or e-signatures, you can also send those documents for signature or upload them to the portal simply by right-clicking on them and choosing those options here. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about before we jump into the Q&A um, and, and kind of wrap up our, our document management webinar here. Um, again, wasn't on my list. I'm throwing this in as, a, as an added bonus. And it's about linking existing folders or files to Office Tools DMS without having to import those folders or files themselves. So here's a scenario. Um, that you have a particular folder on your server that you keep all of your QuickBooks files in for your clients. Now, QuickBooks company files have a lot of supporting files, a lot of other things that come along with them. Um, and if we add those into Office Tools, then it kind of creates a mess a little bit. So then how do we get, how do we have access to those QuickBooks files from within Office Tools without actually importing them? Okay, we're gonna create links to those locations. All right, so that's one example. Here's another example. 
Um, we have a Windows folder structure that we cannot import into Office tools for various reasons. There's too many files, the folder names are all wrong, um, or you know, uh, Joe just doesn't want to use Office tools. Let's be honest, all right? Uh, for some reason, Joe <laughs> or Bob or Sarah, whoever it may be, um, the, the, their needs aren't necessarily in line with what Office Tools provides, and they want their Windows folder structure. So instead of moving all of those files into Office Tools um, and then forcing them to go down this road, we just want to reference those files within Office Tools to make it easier for everybody else, but still uh, maintain kind of the previous model, the previous uh, process. And there's a way that we can do that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go into my Windows uh, folder structure here, and we'll just use a file here as an example. Um, here's my folder. Um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in here. And for one reason or another, perhaps I don't want this information in Office Tools. Okay. Um, again, maybe they're QuickBooks things. Maybe it's just a folder system that's not going to line up. So what you can do is go into the go into the actual Windows folder and simply right click on whatever folder or file you would like to have referenced or linked to Office Tools. Okay. Now once you do that, okay, you can right click on that folder. You're going to choose to create a shortcut. So the system is going to do just that. It's going to give you a shortcut for the folder that you just create that you just clicked on. So now I have my 2018 folder as a 2018 shortcut. But the location, the original location is still there. We're not moving anything. We're not risking, you know, uh, uh, any kind of cutting or pasting or transferring. Everything remains the way it's always been. But now I have a shortcut to that location. I simply take that shortcut and drag that into Office Tools. All right, so let me close out of this window here. So now I can bring in this 2018 shortcut into Office Tools. All right, oh, let me choose my category. We'll just call it um, Source Documents. Okay, great. Now I can close this Windows folder and I'm done. So my original location, my original client folders, my QuickBooks files, whatever it may be, are the remain the same. There's no changes to, to that folder system. However, I now have a shortcut in Office Tools. So if I need to get there very quickly, instead of having to do the old open windows, right, drill through folders, and so on and so forth, instead of having to do that, I simply come into Office Tools and I click on the shortcut link and it will bring that up with the path exactly where I created that shortcut to. All right, very handy, very convenient. Yes, you don't have maybe the, the granular detail and filter options um, that you would otherwise have by importing documents directly into Office Tools. However, it does give you the flexibility to leave files and folders in their kind of you know, previous way, whether it's an old system or a different process that you need, um, but still have them referenced within Office Tools. So it's it's kind of the best of both worlds in some ways. Okay, well that wraps up everything that I wanted to cover and talk about um, in this webinar. Um, if there's any more questions that are coming up, please take this time to, to go ahead and ask them. I'll be more than happy to, to spend the next couple minutes here answering any questions that you guys may have. Okay, and there are some questions here about the portal, so I'll try to wrap all of the portal questions up um, into one, one little deal here. Um, the portal is an add-on, so you do have to purchase the portal. You can contact your sales rep if you'd like to do that. The e-signatures um, are part of that, okay? So, um, again, you can go into all that process, and it's built right into Office Tools. So your client will have a portal that they can log into that is created from within Office Tools. You can highlight a document or multiple documents, and actually send those up to the portal uh, by just clicking the button right here on the main screen. Okay. Um, if you have any more questions, please type those in. I'll be more than happy to um, answer those and address them. Um, after the webinar, I'll send you guys some, some information post for that. So uh, at this point, we're, we're, we're finished up. Thank you all so much for attending. I really, really appreciate it. The last thing I'm going to leave with everybody is um, about our conference, the Abacus Maximus Users Conference that we're having the beginning of July in Las Vegas. So please visit the site, abacusmaximus.com. Uh, it's gonna be two days. We're gonna have Office Tools training on every kind of subject. If you've ever been to an Office Tools conference, by the way, or an Accelerate conference, this is gonna be all of that and more. We're gonna have more speakers, uh, uh, more topics, more vendors and exhibitors. Um, sessions, again, are gonna cover everything. We're gonna have trainers on staff and on hand to answer any questions you have. Um, a lot of networking opportunities 
Uh, the food is going to be incredible. We're having a really cool, uh, 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 you know, setup when it comes to food and things of that sort. So please visit abacusmaximus.com and check out the office tools um, section there for for all the sessions. And uh, and and please join us. We will, we'd really like to have you there. Um, all that being said, thank you guys very much for joining us today, and we'll talk to you next week.